As I started to post short videos of some tracks I've made on the EP 133 KO2 from Teenage Engineering, some of you posted that you'd like to see my process for making a song on the device from start to finish. This video is that, a track from scratch. The basis for this song will be mostly stock sounds that came on the device and we'll make a set of sample sounds by chopping up a longer sample. First, let's make sure we're starting with a blank project. Now, since I've been pretty busy on my KO2, all my nine projects are full, but I have a couple that I recorded into Ableton and a couple that just stink, so we'll erase a project to start. Quick warning, when you erase a project, you are also clearing out all of the sounds on all of the groups. So if that was not your intention, erase all the patterns and scenes instead. But we're going to truly start from scratch, no sounds. We hold main to see what project we're on. We're on project eight. We hold the pad of the project we want to erase. That's eight, and we hold erase. And we wait until it stops blinking. And now this project should be empty. No sounds on A, no sounds on C or B or D. And there's nothing there to play. Now we're going to load sounds into the four groups. That is each group, A, B, C, and D, hold 12 sounds each, one for each pad, and we're gonna load all of them. There are four ways to load sounds onto the four groups of pads. First of all, on the device, either punch in the number of the sound or traverse through the library. Second is on the sample tool app, which we'll see online, which is a web-based app at the link in chapter 10.2 of the EP133 guide. Number three is to copy the sound groups from another project, which is a great method. And number four is to sample new sounds directly onto pads. Let's start with the first method, adding sounds directly on the device. And we'll do that in group A. First, we tap A to choose it. We go into sound mode by clicking the sound button. We tap any pad to see what's on the pad, and you can see all of these pads are empty by the three dashes. We pick a pad that we want to set, and we use the plus and minus buttons to traverse. Now on this second pad, I'm gonna choose a snare. Now I know the snares are further up. There's an accelerator to this process where I can hold shift and hit plus to go up by 10 at a time. And there we go, now I'm in the 100s, which are snares. I think I like that one. Okay, so we've got 12 sounds loaded. And that's it. Let's use the second method for group B the sample tool online. The sample tool is a reflection of what's on your machine and lets you manipulate the sounds that are on each of the groups and each of the pads. To use the sample tool, which is the online web app provided by Teenage Engineering, plug your KO2 into your computer with a USB-C cable. Navigate to the sample tool by clicking the link in the EP133 online guide in section 10.2. I'll put the link in the description. You'll see the interface, which is an image of the KO2 and the list of samples available. Many actions on this screen are mimicked on your device and vice versa. You can click into group A to see what sounds are on group A. It is indicated by this orange dot next to the sounds that are on group A. You can see I'm in the kick category right now. And if I scroll down, I'm just using my mouse wheel. I can see all the sounds that are in group A. Now, if I go to snare, I can see which sounds are loaded in group A by this orange dot again, sound 117, the snare rim shot. I can go to symbol and see what sounds are loaded, 210 and 225 and so on. Now I can either click on the device to get to group B and you can see it changes on the interface inside of the sample tool, or I could have clicked on the sample tool button itself on the screen with my mouse. Now I'm in group B. To load sounds onto the pads using the sample tool, we simply drag and drop them. 
Now for group B, I want to use bass sounds. I want that to be my bass track. So I'm going to click on the sounds on the sample tool to actually preview them. And I can actually hear them as I click and I will drop the track and drop them onto the pads that I want the sound to be. Now for group C. Let's use the third method for group C, copying and pasting a whole group of sounds from another project. Now first, let's check that we're on project eight still. You can see when I hold main, the LED by pad eight indicates that we're on project eight. To navigate to project three, that's the one I want. So I'm going to copy all of the sounds that are in group C on project three to group C on project eight. First, we have to copy the group of sounds. We go to the group we want to copy, which in this case happens to be group C on project three. We go into sound mode. You've got to make sure you're in sound mode for this to work. And now we're going to use the copy command, which is shift group C. There's a little copy icon on the C button. Now, it's just a coincidence that we're copying group C and using the C button for the copy command. No matter what group I was copying from, I would use the C button for the copy command. I hold shift and hit C. I'm going to hit C twice. The first time it copies pad, but I still hold shift down. And the second time it copies the whole group. Now that group is copied to memory. I go back to project eight, hold main, hold eight. Now I'm in project eight. We'll check. I'm on the group I want to copy to group C. And now I'm going to use the paste command, which is the shift D button. And you'll see it'll tell me that I'm copying the whole group. I go to group C. I go into sound mode, which I'm in. I do shift D and I just copied the whole group into C and now I have all of my sounds in C. So now for group D, we'll use the fourth method of sound loading, and that is to directly sample a sound from an external source. We're actually going to use a radio and the mic, the microphone of the KO2. So this might be somewhat unpredictable, but fun. We'll get our source ready, dialing in the radio to a cool station for some source sample. So let's turn it on. Back in the 90s when they would give you the cable guy window perfect. of, well, 8 a.m. That'll be perfect. Let's just do that. Again, say, okay, so to sample on. this, first we get into group D, which is where we're going to sample to. We hit the sample button and all the pad LEDs blink red. We're going to play our source, and when it's at the point we want to record, we press and hold the pad to which you want to record the sample. So we're going to record it to this, what I call the first pad, if you're going up this way. Now, when you're sampling, you want to first set the level and the threshold. That's with the orange and black knobs. So the level is how high you want the level of the recording to be. And the threshold is how low you want it to start recognizing that something is there to be sampled. So you can see the microphone lighting up when the threshold is high. The microphone doesn't light up until my voice gets louder then it lights up. So we want to go higher on the level and lower on the threshold but not so low on the threshold that even background noise would make it go. So right around there looks right. Okay, now we get our source ready. I could count on one hand. And now we're gonna sample it. Times I've seen a transformer blow like that. Um, maybe only twice actually, but yeah, it's, it's one of those things you don't even think about or even notice a transformer on the pole. You, you, you don't even think. Okay, we got that. Let's see what it sounds like. Um, maybe only So twice. now what I want to do is I want to auto chop that, which means I want to take that sample and spread it across all of the pads in group D. To do that, I hold shift and chop. Um, maybe only twice, actually. And it's but playing the sample. Yeah, it's, it's, and it's one of those waiting things for me to tell you it don't even what group. think about or even notice a transformer. So I'm going to tell it that I want it chopped across group D. So I hit D. 
and it tells me that it's going to use 12 pads, all 12 pads. If I wanted, I could reduce that and say just 11 pads and leave that pad free or 10 pads. I'm going to let it use all 12 pads and then we'll go back to main. Um, um, maybe only twice actually, but yeah, it's... Now, what's happening behind the scenes is that sample is on every pad, but the trim, the start and end point of each pad is different. So if I wanted, I could actually change the trim of this by going into sound edit, go to trim. Um, me, um, me, um, 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 um. Um, and I can trim it finer by holding shift and it makes it a little um, finer just um, one um, little bit um, at a time. Um, 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 and now this one I'm um, going to change the start point. I could trim all the pads now and make them a little bit more perfect and I won't spend the time to do that right now. Now, if I wanted to sample a guitar or some other source that requires two hands to play, I might need to hire someone to hold that sample pad for me because that's the only time it's sampling is when I'm holding that pad. Now, you can actually rename samples once they're there on the sample tool on the web app. I can't do that on the device. Now, just so you know, I ran into a lot of quirks sampling and chopping. For example, sampling to one pad apparently put the sample on all other pads which were empty in that group. That might be fine, but I didn't expect it. Also, the slot where the sample went in the sample tool was somewhat unpredictable. The EP133 manual said it would go to the next available slot, but that wasn't always true for me. So I think there are some bugs there, but I'm not going to debug it right now. Now remember, when you chop a sample like I did, you're virtually putting the same sound or sample on all the pads in that group with different start and end points on the trim settings. Now this implies that if you erase the sound on any one of those pads, you've actually erased it from all the pads because you're erasing the sound from the project. To erase just one pad's trim of the same sample, reassign that pad to another sound. That's the best way to do it. Okay, so that was a somewhat long way to get four groups of sounds populated to make patterns and from those patterns a song. So let's start a pattern. First on group A, we're going to lay down some drums. So to start, we tap record and we can see on the screen the length of our pattern will be one bar. Now I want to change that. So while I'm in this mode, while it's waiting to record, I can hit the plus button and it changes it to two bars.